Good morning, it's Alex Radcliffe from Boardroom Co. Uh, I don't know what the deal with this video is going to be. This is uh, early morning, it's 6 o'clock, I happened to get up before the kids, and I grabbed a cup of coffee, went to the basement, and I happened to have slightly neatened up, well, since yesterday, so I figured maybe I'll do a bit of a studio tour, which means this might be a Patreon exclusive video, this might be main channel, I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. Uh, this is mostly going to be me not being on camera because that way I can actually point the camera and talk about things as opposed to trying to focus on having me in the shot, which would be more awkward for the type of video this will be. So I'm going to have another sip of coffee and we'll continue in a second. Thanks for joining me and let's take a tour of the, the studio, which is a fancy name for my basement. Well, let's start off exactly where I was sitting a minute ago and go from there. So this is basically going to be the studio space that you can normally see in any given video. Uh, that's going to be my main monitors, my setup over there. You can see the three different screens. That's going to be where I get work done, uh, primarily working on those two and then time stamping a video on that while I work in the background, all that kind of thing over there. This over here is going to be the main studio space you see. Now I'm gonna to have to be careful here because that top bar over there has a wire along on it and that wire is connected to the camera giving it power. And I just spent 13 minutes talking about it and showing you this stuff and then accidentally snapping the power out from this from this camera and well, had to start again. But yeah, that's going to be the main studio space where you normally see in a video. It looks a little different when you view it like this when you can see light one, you can see light two, you can see the actual everything set up, but it will look more and more familiar as I zoom in and try to basically take this positioning over here and boom, ta-da! That's going to be your Board Game Co. studio space when I mimic this camera. Now, the top camera is going to usually be mounted over there. This is the camera I'm holding for this video instead. That top camera normally goes, well, it goes onto this at other times, which is then sat on that desk, and it becomes the camera I utilize for when I'm looking at, you know, Kickstarters and I have a camera pointed at my face. So that's able to, this wire and the lack of any firm connection is how I'm able to transfer it back and forth between these two areas pretty quickly and easily to get the job done. Now let's talk about some game shelves in the background before we transition to other parts of the studio, basement, whatever you want to call it. But to begin with, we're going to have all our shelves over here. So we have three chairs. We have two, one, two, three over there. We have a fourth chair actually, kind of, just when we need it. But yeah, those are going to be the four chairs we need for when we really need to get things done. And from those chairs, well not just chairs, that's just going to be what we have chair-wise. And then we have over here, we have the left three columns, or left two and a half columns really, are going to be games that are in our collection, in my collection. And those are going to be, well, you know, you can see the Zombicides, you can see Assassin's Creed, Chronicles of Dunagar up there, Destinies, Rise of Moloch, all that. And the two and a half columns are going to be games that I need to review, both my own and and publisher sent, but those two and a half columns are going to be games that I need to give coverage to at some point. They're on my list to get to in some way, shape, or form. Uh, then we have the shelves behind. Now, when you see those shelves behind, when you see all the the nemesis, the the the, the, the lucky ducks, the the Cthulhu that may die, Great Wall, all of that. Behind over there, most of the time, and we have a tangle of wires down there, but most of the time, behind those are going to be more of the same. So, for instance, behind Nemesis is more Nemesis. Behind the Great Wall is more the Great Wall. But then behind some other games, we'll have other games, because not all games do I have enough. Like behind Machina Arcana, I believe I have Merchant's Cove, I think. I have something behind Machina Arcana. But some of the games behind Stillman Saga, I have After the Empire. Behind some games, I have other games that are, well, not the same. Which is important, because once in a while, I forget that those other games. In fact, Mercenaries Co. is down there, which means we have Valor and Villainy behind Machina Arcana. Either way, point is, most of the time, and Wild Ascent. Ooh, I almost forgot Wild Ascent. But that's going to be what's going on back there. And once in a while I mix up a game or two, but most of the time they're fairly static, because I don't want to do something all day long rearranging shelves. Although I do enjoy rearranging shelves. By the way, fun fact, when I say earlier that I neatened up the studio, I don't mean that the studio is neat. I mean that it's neat compared to, well, usual. Now up there, we have the top setup over there. That's primarily so that things look neater on camera. If you look at some of my earlier studio videos, you'll see that the back looks really off because it doesn't look good behind those cell shelves and the game boxes look much better with some miniatures along for the ride. Now up there, we have, what do we have? We have the Super Fantasy Brawl, the Reckoners, Hate, which I have to remove, I have to move around over there because it used to be where Madara is, but then I played Hate and I would like Hate to be accessible now. Then we have Mechs and Minions, which I love, Claustrophobia, which I haven't played, 
Blade, the Raccoon is a Super Fantasy Brawl, still accessible over there. And then we have Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion and Primal up there because they fit nicely in those spots. And I like Primal, and I need to play Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. That's going to be the primary main studio space. Just again, one more zoomed out shot of everything you can see over here. And again, I have to be careful here because I'm on a power cord. So that's going to be always fun. And that's basically what's going on over there. Now, in terms of lighting, I have a few lights going on. I have light one over there, light two over here. And that light one, by the way, is indeed diffused, being diffused by an old t-shirt, because that worked and it did the job. Then we have behind there, we have some colored lights on the floor, where you can see sort of down there on both sides. And then we have some LED light strips where you can kind of see along the entire railing. And then lastly, we have another light over there for some healthy little backlighting, which if you look at some of my recent videos, compared to some of my, you know, a month or two videos, you'll see that it adds a lot of uh, 3D-ness to the shot by having a light, a solid light behind me over there. Now, speaking of which, let's go ahead and show you the fun little trick that I like to do, because, well, this is, I basically, if you think about it, I have one light over there, I have the light strips, I have two lights plus two backlights, and then I have to turn off the lights. I have like eight different light switches I would have to press, which is why you may have seen this trick before, but I do this instead. Alexa, now recording. That's going to go ahead and turn all the lights on or off as necessary. Now, it does take the camera a second to adjust to that new, basically, uh, light source that's going on. But once it does, we now have the board game studio shot for videos. Although, granted, it's a little bit lower because right now this is resting on top of the camera that would be there. That's going to be everything you see. And then again, the zoomed out look of what's actually going on and the mess that goes on as soon as you pan out. This, by the way, in my experience, is most board game content creators studios. Most of the time, as soon as you move out of the shot, it becomes a bit of a mess. It's the nature of trying to work with small spaces because no one in this industry or very few people in this industry are making enough money to be quote unquote, you know, content creators that are making it influencers that are, you know, retiring in giant mansions. We don't have any of that going on. Now I will turn the lights back and we'll go back to Alexa done recording. Now, one thing I probably should have showed you over there, but there's another switch, another light source boat by the stairs. When I hit now recording, there is a bit of a red light that will pop over there. That warns my family that I'm now recording so that, well, they don't actually come down and we can actually, well, be recording without interruption or with as few interruptions as possible. Now, this is the part where I'm going to actually sit down specifically. So give me a second. And I'm doing that because this is the part of the video earlier where I didn't have a good sense of exactly how far I had on this camera cord that's giving me power. And well, I ended up snapping out and having to reshoot all this video. So let's go ahead and start panning around showing you various things. I probably will stand up to show you my collection briefly, but let's just go through various things from the studio to where we left off. So we have the studio as there. Now you can see all those Steam Forge games over there. Long story short, we'll talk about this doing an unboxing video, but I have the entire Steam Forge games collection, except for the base game. So we'll talk about that when I do my unboxing video. Yes, it's a lot of Steam Forged. Uh, yes, I thought that was a fun place to put it for right now. It's a little intense just how much content there is. Although to be fair, I think a lot of the boxes just have like a single large miniature. But no, it's not going to be stored in that kind of setup or box. It's gonna be drastically changed when I actually turn around and get it set up. Now, over there, Along the entire top of this basement, we have molding issues that they don't line up nicely. Uh, if you look back over here, you can actually see some areas kind of in the cubbies where you don't even have molding. That's been an issue since day one. It's not that it ever got better, it's that I got better at hiding it in my videos with structured boxes and frame shots. Now this is going to be the couch area that you're used to. So generally what I do is I can just take this tripod over here, move it to roughly over there, then I take the camera cord cable and I unplug it from that and plug it into that. Two separate mics going on, in addition to the mic on this camera, by the way, which is pointed backwards because it has to for me to do the shot. But then once you do that, I'm generally set up to go. I have another little light over there. You can kind of see that. Maybe you can kind of see the light next to the Seder box from Black Rose Wars, but that's going to be providing a bit of a soft orange glow from the background. Again, lighting is a big deal. It can always be improved upon, but I try to get it as good as I can with what I know. Uh, over there, you can also see my little fly swatter, because yes, it's great to have a fly swatter in the back of a few of my videos. And yes, I do have it in the back of a few of my videos. I should probably move that fly swatter somewhere else. It's not the most uh, 
elegant version of things. And by the way, there's actually two over there, back to back. The new one is not nearly as good as the old one, because they made the new one protective to like not hurting people or children or stuff by having another grill enmeshed in the grill, which is great, except it's now much less efficient at actually killing things, so... Well, that's unfortunate. Anyways, that's going to be the couch over here. Now, this couch piece, by the way, what actually used to happen, this couch used to extend. It used to be these two pieces, then another piece, then another piece, then a corner piece, and plus an ottoman. That's what it used to be. Now, all those pieces have one at a time shrunk away as this basement turned into a studio. It's the very nature of just trying to reconfigure life around your needs, but we currently have one of these pieces is by my sister-in-law, and the other two pieces, we have one upstairs and one in the attic. We need to figure out what to do with them. The basic problem is that the couch was always large and able to be jumped around on, but it wasn't being utilized for its length, or at least very infrequently did the length matter. But what we did is, once we started growing this space out, and then getting more Calyx cubbies, because I have more games coming in and rotating, I generally have a good 10 to 15 Calyx cubbies of just rotating games by the very nature of just doing content creation, meaning not even collection games, just rotating. So I added this Calyx here, and then we needed to add the background there, and we reconfigured, and we put the table here. All those things resulted in this couch slowly shrinking one section at a time until it got to the bare minimum it can be, well, called a couch, which is where we're at now. Technically, I can probably get it down to one section if I really tried, and this is the fun part of it, camera framing. If I did that, if I got it down to one section, if done right, I could probably frame the camera in such a way that you never even noticed unless I told you. That's the kind of thing that's fun about camera framing. Now, I'd never be able to pull out, and then uh, six months later, someone would be like, hey, you never really see the whole couch anymore, and I'd be like, yeah, I got rid of half the couch. That might actually happen. We'll see. I may need more space. We'll see what happens over here. Anyways, moving on. So, moving on. Again, it's going to be a little further away because I don't want to test the boundaries of this cable. But that's going to be mostly the kids and lighter weight games shelf. It's mostly blocked as well at the moment. But we have, we do have some things that need to be cleaned up. Like we have the Black Rose Wars. We have too many bones. And then a uniquely geek little table to store things over there. Uh, not, not table. Cubby to store things. All those things need to be cleaned up. We have a bunch of plastic bags in the corner. In that shelf over there, we have sleeves. That's why I keep my sleeves and those two cubbies over there. Sleeves for, I have like thousands of sleeves, making sure that I'm accommodating for all different card sizes and types. And then behind those three boxes, we have three of those boxes that are being sent out to somebody. And then the bottom corner box is actually, in the left corner peeking out, is going to be an all-in pledge of Ankh. But you're like, Alex, I thought we saw Ankh over there. And you did see Ankh over there. But basically, long story short, is... I actually got my copy of Ankh to unbox from Jesse, who had a his copy available, and basically, Quacklope, and I told him I'd give him my copy back when I got mine, and then mine showed up three days later. But that's going to be what happened with Ankh. So we have an all-in pledge sitting there that's really just being returned. And then we have, what else? We have those three boxes are being sent out, and that's basically what's going on. We have some games up top. We have Steam Up and Solo Up, uh, Solar Sphere that need to be packed and shipped out as well. Like I said, the basement isn't clean, or the studio, let's use fancy terms. The studio isn't clean, it's just cleaner. Now, over there, as we move around, that's going to be obviously the steps to upstairs, where we start getting much messier in the background. Not to say that that's not messy, but there's messy, and there's messier. But then over there on that shelf, that shelf is usually kind of just a placement stuff for just shoving things as they tend to need to be rearranged later. Uh, you can see the garbage can, you can see my laptop bag, you can see EOS Island of Angels, which is a prototype that I just finished filming a review for. That needs to go upstairs and just finished as relative to, to when you watch this video. And then we're going to try to stand up over here and try not to snap anything out. But let's go ahead and show you some, well, as much as we can in terms of cubby space and things like that. So, if I zoom out over here, we can see some games over here. We can see Glorantha and Hero, uh, Power, Hero Rangers, geez, Power Rangers, Heroes of the Grid. I've read the rules for Power Rangers, excited to play that one. Glorantha, I haven't read the rules, but it's basically similar to Cthulhu Wars, which I'm getting rid of all the Cthulhu Wars you see over there. That's an extra t-shirt in case I need another lighting diffuser. Fun times, right? Then over here, we have a printer behind that light, as well as a few shelves full of, well, 
various uh, filing stuff. Those eventually need to be moved around. We just need to find a place for them. Hasn't been a huge priority. And then we start shifting into the collection. Now, in general, over here, lots and lots of games. If you have any questions about any of them, feel free to ask. As a good rule of thumb, the higher the games are on the shelf, the more likely that they've been played as opposed to unplayed. The lower shelves tend to have more of my unplayed games. And yes, I have an embarrassing number of unplayed games. I, I used to, I talked about this in the past, I used to keep my unplayed games. In fact, a long time ago I did a video, one of my first videos on the channel that did pretty well, was going to be keeping a lean collection, I think, how to keep a lean collection. Now, lean is relative. Lean meant more along the lines of not keeping things you're not using, and not having unplayed games and stuff like that. And back then, I used to have around 30 unplayed games at any given time. With the rise of content creation, the number of games that I've well, still had or wanted or already backed and stuff like that are still coming in. But the problem is now I'm getting games to cover for Kickstarters, for feature prototypes, for, for new games that are coming out. My entire nature of gaming has shifted, and what used to be a regular rotation of 30 unplayed games that I'd play one, another one would come in, I'd play one, and we'd constantly rotate around the 30 number. Like, I considered 40 to be, like, a scary number. I was like, no, 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 when it gets to 40, I have to move down. Now we're much higher than that, unfortunately. And hopefully that will change. Hopefully I'll be able to start catching up as I actually get more time into my life. For right now, for those who know, for those who pay attention the videos. For right now, I'm still juggling three things. I'm juggling, well, content creation, uh, board game code, the retail operation, which I, in the next eight months or so, I will no longer be doing. Whether or not I train someone else in, or whether or not it gets sold, or whether or not it gets shut down entirely, those I don't know, but I will no longer be spending the three to four hours a day I currently do on that in like eight months. So that's going to free up a chunk of time there. And then I still have a day job as well, which for right now is still in the picture, unless until and the day when I can basically make content creation a full-time a full-time thing, which uh, might take time. We'll see. I'm, I'm enjoying myself, so I'm not in a rush. I mean, I am in a rush because I want to play more games, but I'm enjoying myself and I appreciate all of you. But yeah, going through those. So I recently just organized my shelves. I do this. I reorganize these shelves probably once every three to four months. I tend to, enough things come out, I pull a game off, you know, I'll sit there and say, oh, that game's going away, oh, a new game comes in, and the shelves kind of magically rotate as time goes on. But that also means that they get messier and messier as time goes on, and so every three to four months, I start pulling things off and completely reorganize them. I don't have any major reorganizing strategy I've gone with. The one thing I haven't done yet is I've never done that color pattern where you go from left to right and try to match boxes by color, and that's because I feel it'll be a nightmare to find the games. Right now, I try to match more by what the games are doing, or potentially even colors, or I'll have my area control games all together on that shelf, and then Blood Rage over there. Then I'll have Aquatica, Evadel, and Paleo, which are all beautiful games that are fun to play in different ways, all as a set over there. So I do kind of semi-combine by type, but only to a limit. It tends to be more box size based, and then like, you know, different themes and whatnot. And then as you move down there, I do have some extra cubbies. That's because whenever I reorganize, I usually find extra space just by the very nature of reorganizing. And that's primarily going to be a tour. That's basically what we have going on. We have the, the Board Game Co. Studio Space, otherwise known as My Basement, that's being utilized for, well, whatever it needs to be utilized for at any given time. Uh, let's go ahead and turn this off and we'll return back to, to me. And we're back. So it's time for coffee because this entire time I have not been having my coffee. It's sitting here feeling all neglected. But that's going to be the studio. That's going to be what I'm working with right now. Uh, in general, uh, so some general framework here because once we're being all personal, that's not, why not? So my basic story over here is that we live in this house and... At some point, we'd like to move for a variety of reasons, both uh, based on where our friends are, both based on having more space. This is not a large house. Like, if you saw uh, one of Quackle's blogs had uh, showed basically the mess the house is in right now, because Rina's working on the kitchen, renovating the kitchen. And to that end, we have a fairly small house that has a full room being condensed into the other rooms while we work on it, which made the past six weeks in this house have been very cramped. The good news is when we're done, it's going to feel like a giant house. But yeah, this is a, I mean, it's not a tiny house, don't get me wrong. It's like, I think, 1,800 square feet for the six of us, which is not tiny. We have four bedrooms, so I'm not complaining in the slightest. But this is a house that's on the smaller side. And we've always intentionally taken the strategy of be as conservative as possible with what we spend and how we spend it as we do things now in order so that as time goes on, we can be more financially stable and choose to make decisions later. It's always about, you know, for us, it's always been about be conservative now so we can get things later. And to that end, we do plan on potentially getting a larger house at some point, you know, finances afford, finances permitting, and of course, and the balance is, of course, this whole YouTube thing and how things play out on that end. But 
like one of the things that I have in my dream requirements would be like a real studio, like having a real space where I can actually have a door, like a door would be amazing. I mean, the, the noise over the, the lifetime of the channel, the background noise has gotten better. If you watch my earlier videos, it was really ab abysmal, but it's gotten better, but you'll still hear background noise. You'll still hear kids in the background. And while I love my kids, uh, there are people who don't mind it and find it endearing. And there are people who don't love the background noise and both of those are completely fine. But I'd love to have the control over that kind of things, those kinds of things, that kind of thing, those kinds of things. But either way, so yeah, it's I like what I have right now. It's going to be this way for the next five years plus, I imagine. But at some point, I would like at some point we'd like to have a different house, a different setup, and then we can craft a studio space around the needs as opposed to kind of just building a studio in the basement where it worked. This is just like what we have where it worked. I used to film on a coffee table across the room. I've gotten slowly more professional just because I like... And professional takes away from the homely vibe. It takes away from the feeling of being someone new and just being a scrappy starter in the space. But it d does come at the cost of the quality of your videos. So there's a trade-off. And so that's why I still have the couch and I still try to go for that vibe. And I'll still have videos like this. And I still stick with the personal tone of just me trying to talk to you about what's going on and not worrying too much about this that or the other and plus the lighting in this video should definitely give you that personal vibe because my face looks yellow because that's what happens when you don't set up your lighting properly you just rely on the camera iso to like figure it out itself but yeah this has given you this has been a, a tour of the board game co studio space because it's cleaner than it's been in a while which should tell you what it usually looks like. Usually things come in, they go on the floor, and I get to them when I have a chance. Right now, it's 6 in the morning, I woke up early, and so I have a chance. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Co., and I hope you have a good one.